while creating daytime objects we specify different formats using the conversion specification but most often you will not create daytime objects yourself and instead deal with data that may come your way from a system or a colleague or a collaborator in such cases we need to be able to pass date time from the data provided to us in this module we'll focus on passing date time from character data both basar and dobudate package offer functions to pass date and time and we'll explore a few of them in this module we'll initially use functions from basar and later move on to uh, explore those from lubridate which give us an opportunity to compare and contrast it will also allow us to choose the functions based on the data we are dealing with right so here are a few functions that we we'll look at when converting from string or character data to date then we'll be using strip time and parse underscore date underscore time now strip time will convert character data to posix lt class you will use this when converting from character data to date time objects now on the other hand if you want to convert date time data to character data or string data you can use strf time format and as dot character functions now these functions will convert posix ct or posix lt objects to character now let us start with a simple example right so the data we have been supplied as date or time as character data and in the format uh, year month and day the year represented by four digits right and nothing separates the year month and date from each other right unlike in the previous examples that we dealt with they were separated either by a slash or by a dot or a dash right now the data that we are looking at the components of the date are not separated and we need to convert this to an object of class posix lt right so here is the date it is in the format okay so we know that it's the year followed by either the day or month and then another component but they are not separated by anything now we'll use strip time to convert this to an object of class posix lt right let's see how that goes we'll call this as drill underscore date because we already have an object called release underscore date and then we have strip time first we specify the date that we have followed by the conversion specification again using the format argument right let's try this out i'll call this variable then we can see that it has been transformed to the iso standard right and here we also have the uh, time zone along with that and if you check the class you can see that it belongs to posix lt right so if you have a basic knowledge of conversion specification then you can use strip time to pass character data to posix lt now let us quickly explore the functions to convert date time to character before moving on to the functions from the lubridate package right so we saw those functions here right strf time and then we have format and as dot character right so you can take this rel underscore date and then use crf time right i'll call this as rel underscore date underscore strf so that we can check the class of this object after we create it right now check the class and you should see character right so we took an object of class posix lt and then we use this function to change it to uh, an object of class um, character right 
now we'll change this again using another function which is format right so recreate the same variable and again check the class right again it is an object of class character so the last one is as dot character which is a coercion function and again we have an object of class character so these are functions from base R that can be used to pass data uh, from character to date time objects and again convert from date time class to back to character right now as you can see all the three functions that we just used converted uh, date time objects to character now let us move on and explore the functions from the lubridate package right so start with a example in which the release date is formatted in three different ways but they have one thing in common right that's the order in which the components appear the formats are different but what is common between all the three of them is that the order in which the components appear is the same in all the three formats the year is followed by the month and then the date right and to pass that uh, different format we'll use a new function called pass underscore date underscore time right so i'll call this of us lubridate here and we'll use this function from lubridate which is pass underscore date underscore time right which will pass the input into POSIX CT objects right so strip time from base R passed uh, from character to POSIX LT now pass underscore date underscore time will pass the input into POSIX CT objects right now I'll create a new set of data for release underscore date like I said before they have the same order for the components but they are in different formats right so we'll use these different date format and then we can parse them now don't get confused with this uh, last one here with the first one here right now all the three here are separated by a dash here there is no dash between the month and the day right the month and the day component are actually separated by a space and not a dash right so let's see how we can use pass underscore date underscore time the first thing is you specify the input which in our case is release underscore date and now we have to specify the format right now you're going to keep things very simple here and i'm going to say ymd Right. All I'm saying is the first component is the year, the second component is the month, and the third component is the day. All right. So you can see it has passed it and it has given you the output in ISO standard. Right. You have the month followed by day month. You have the year followed by the month and the day and the time zone. And you can see the year is in four digits. Right. So when you are using pass underscore date underscore time it's easier to specify the format in which the uh, input is right now you can do this in another way right you add a gap between these three and still it works right and I can do this as well and also it works so it's more flexible compared to the ones from the uh, base hub right now the one thing i want you to do is use strip time with this example and then see what happens right so i'm not going to do it here i'm going to leave it for you to try instead of parse underscore date underscore time use strip time and then see the output so great we have used both strip time and parse underscore date underscore time now can you tell what differentiates these two functions right what differentiates parse underscore date underscore time when compared to strip time right so here is the difference right you don't need to include the percentage prefix or separator in case of parse underscore date underscore time 
and you can specify several daytime formats, right? So when compared to strip time in pass underscore date underscore time, you don't need to include the percentage prefix as separator and you can specify several different daytime formats. Now there are other helpful functions that can be used to pass date and time as well, right? So uh, the first case is where you pass dates with only year, month and day components. The second one is where you pass dates with all the components, right? You have year, month, day, hour, minute and second. And then finally you have only hour, minute and second. That is only the time component. So that is basically the date component, date and time component and only the time component, right? So let us check this out. We'll check out a bunch of helper functions. Right, so when you have year, month, day, then you can just use YMD. Right, now let us say you specify it in a different format. Right, again we have year, month, day, but I'm specifying it in a different format now. Right, so it is able to pass the date. Now let us say you have date, month and year, right? So that is another example. Now let us say we have all the six components, right? So you have the year, month, day, followed by the hour, minute and second, right? So let us say we'll write it like this, year, month, day, hour, minute and second. Right, I will be able to pass this as well. In these cases, you can see that we do not have any separator between the uh, date component and the time component. Within them also, there is nothing that separates the year from the month or the month from the date. Similarly, nothing separates the hour from the minute and minute from the second. And it's also not enclosed in quotes. And we are also not specifying uh, we are not also we are also not using any conversion specification, right? We are just specifying the order in which the uh, components are present, and it is able to pass the date, time, and the time zone as well. Let us look at a few examples that include only the hour, minute, and second components, right? So we have eight, five, and three. Let us see how this works out. Right, so it shows 8 hour, 5 minute and 3 seconds. If you have only minute and second, then you can write it like this. Right, to show 5 minute, 3 second, then when you have hour and minute, you can write it as 8 slash Right, so all these helper functions are extremely useful, right? Uh, the date, the components within themselves, they may not be separated by uh, anything, neither slash, dash, or dot, or anything. And you, you don't enclose these in quotes, but still when you specify the order in which the components are present, it is parsed and the output is in the ISO 8601 standard. Right, so we have added a a uh, few practice questions the same as what we saw in the previous module right but this time we want you to use either strip time or pass underscore date underscore time or any of the helper functions right the ones which we just explored here you can use any of these helper functions and you have to parse these date and time again they're there in the learning management system in a pdf file along with the solutions in our script so try them and then compare your answers with the ones given by us in the our script all right so next module we'll learn how to extract the different date and time components from a date time object i hope you have enjoyed listening to this video please be kind enough to like and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply to them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos on our playlist, and subscribe to R Squared Academy channel to learn more. Happy learning!